Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about feeding your axolotl. So first things first, you're going to want to wash your hands. And I mean really completely wash your hands, go up your arms, under the nails. You want to get any germs or contaminants off of your hands first. You do not want to be putting that into your tank. What I use for feeding on a daily basis is a long pair of tweezers. You can either get the curved kind or the straight kind. I got a two pack off of Amazon. I think it was like $8, it was super cheap. And then you're going to need a large turkey baster. Anything smaller than a turkey baster really is not going to do the trick. And then you'll need a little cup or bowl, um, and I'll explain why later. So, oxalotl food is divided into frozen food, pellets, and live food. When your axolotl is very small when they're first born, so unless you're a breeder or you happen to snag one that was just born, um, you'll be feeding it live daphnia. I don't have that here because my axolotls are too old for live daphnia, but the first instinct that your axolotl will have when it's born is that snapping motion to get live food. So you're going to want to put something in there that's moving around that will get their attention. So after we've washed our hands, you're going to want to turn off your filtration system, unless it's a sponge filter, that really doesn't matter. But you don't want your filter on, because then your food will be flying everywhere and it's just going to make it harder to clean later. So I'll start off with pellets. And these are the pellets that I use. They are Hikari Sinking Carnivore Pellets. I believe they're salmon. Flavor. So the whole point is you want them to sink. Your axolotl is not going to go to the top for food like a fish would. They sit on the bottom of the tank, so if you don't get sinking pellets, they're not going to see the food and they're not going to eat. These ones are what I feed Pika right now. She is seven inches, probably seven and a half by now. Um, they are quite large. So I do not give these to Soybean, um, he is only 2 inches and they are just, they're too large for his little mouth so I have to give him um, these smaller pellets. But what I do with the smaller pellets, because they tend to have a harder time sinking unfortunately, um, the bigger ones will just plop right in and they'll sink down to the bottom. But what I do with the smaller pellets is I will actually fill up this cup with some water, put some pellets in there kind of swirl it around and let it sink down to the bottom so that they're already moistened. That way I can just use the turkey baster right in front of soybean. He notices them. Everyone's happy. frozen food and I'll start off with the blood worms again I'm using the same brand it's Hikari I think that's how you pronounce it um, blood worms are a personal favorite of my axolotls I don't know about anyone else but mine go crazy for them and they're extremely flavorful most frozen foods like the blood worms and the brine shrimp are gonna be really flavorful so that's probably why they love to go for them and they're loaded with vitamins and protein and you can either buy them in little frozen cubes or I prefer these um, sheets. That way I can just break off a piece um, and then again I'll put it in the little cup with some water, swirl it around so that they kind of thaw out and then I'll use my long tweezers and kind of um, hold it right in front of my axolotl's face. That way um, worms aren't getting everywhere in your water because these are pretty messy. They will leave behind these 
little tiny white specks in your water known as cyclops, and yes, they are live creatures that just come with these babies, unfortunately. Um, it's a type of uh, copepod, I think that's how you pronounce it. Google it, I don't know, but when I first noticed it in my tank, I wasn't doing a very good job of cleaning out all the bloodworms. I had a tank that had lots of decor in it and lots of fluffy pan plants. So it was getting stuck in the plants and I wouldn't notice it. And before you know it, I had a whole outbreak of these little Cyclops dudes just hopping around in my tank and they are annoying to say the least. They are beyond annoying. Yes, water changes will get rid of it, but you will never completely get rid of it. To this day, I still have those in my tank. And they're not harmful to your axolotl. They are quite annoying though. If they get in their gills, it'll just irritate your axolotl. It's like, it's almost like tickling them. And then they'll do that weird dog scratch thing. So you don't <laughs> want to leave your food behind. But they are extremely, like almost microscopic small and they just hop around on the glass. They tend to sit in areas that have no water movement, so definitely that's why you want to lift up your decor because they will be sitting underneath there, and especially those caves that your axolotls love to hide in, that's an optimal spot for them where the water is not flowing, where it's nice and dark. So again, cleaning is super, super important after you feed your axolotl. So you really want to make sure you're putting the food in front of your axolotl's face so that they notice it, they eat it, and right after you're either spot cleaning it out with your um, turkey baster, or you're just doing a water change and you get it all out with your siphon. So the thing about these blood worms is you got to be careful. Um, I've only experienced it with this type of food. I don't know about any other type of food, but. It's really important to make sure that they do not get worms stuck in their gills. They will not be able to breathe. It happens from time to time. Not every time you feed them, it's not a big deal. You just kind of brush it off if you see it happen. But you do have to watch your axolotl when they are consuming these. Um, you don't want any axolotls choking because yes, it is possible underwater. It does come in cubes, but this is what it'll tend to look like. It's kind of weird, but same process. I put it in the little dish and swirl it around, but I use the turkey baster to put it in my tank. And I like to keep it all in one spot, that way I'm not putting it everywhere and that's harder to clean. Plus your axolotl, yes they're pretty good hunters, but it's easier for them if all the food is in one spot. So, these are gut loaded um, with multivitamins. They have fatty acids and lipids that are really going to help your axolotl grow. Um, so, I highly recommend frozen food. That's a go to for most people. Um, pellets tend to not be as nutritious as these frozen foods because they are, because they are frozen, they keep their nutrients um, and flavor for your axolotl. So, it's better for them and it's better for you. And next, I will talk about live worms. I just started doing this. Um, still don't really know how I feel about it. <laughs> it's kind of weird. I'm not into the whole murdering a live creature, but it's the circle of life, I suppose. So I got these from my local pet store, and I do not recommend Walmart's live worms. Just don't do it. <laughs> They're usually not fresh. But 
these have supposedly have 24 worms in them. They're, they come in dirt, you keep them refrigerated. Super important about these though is because they are in dirt, you want to get your worm out, put it in a cup of water, and get all that dirt off. You do not want that going into your tank. Um, so what I usually do is I pop the lid open, I'll use my tweezers because <laughs> I don't like handling the worms with my fingers, and I will just plop it in the cup with water, swirl it around, and again, you're going to want to use the tweezers to put it right in front of your oxalotl's face. They'll snap out, grab it, and they might spit it out, pull it back in a few times because their teeth aren't very sharp. They're just made for grinding. Like if your oxalotl were to bite you, it would not break your skin. disclaimers for food. You're going to want to stay away from anything that has an exoskeleton, whether that be krill, um, certain types of worms, just stay away from it completely. Don't even bother with it because not only is it difficult for your oxalotl to digest itself, but because they can't digest it properly, it'll usually come out um, whole and that will clog up your filter it could break it, um, it'll make a huge mess, so I just wouldn't even bother with it. So, I know when I first started um, keeping oxalotls, I was like, how much do I feed them? How do I know how much is the right amount? And I know that on the back of these, it says feed no more than what your fish will consume within 30 to 45 seconds. I don't think that's enough time. I... I think a lot of people use the two minute rule. Um, I'll usually give like five minutes, especially if you notice that your oxalotl doesn't notice the food right away, if they're on the other side of the tank, give them a minute to eat. They have to eat to grow um, and be healthy. And overfeeding isn't the worst thing in the world. Your oxalotl will most likely spit it up. Um, but again, if you're doing that, if you're overfeeding every day, then that's going to be problematic. But it'll happen, trust me. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. Um, more videos to come. Comment, like, subscribe. Um, again, I am on Instagram as Oxlotl Army, and I hope you guys enjoy this video.